the stage is nice, but you know, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I don't normally have it because I stand six foot five. I, 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 I'm awfully tall. Is anyone else over six feet at all? Any? How tall are you, Nicole? Yeah. Six two. Did you play sports in, in high school? Pardon? Very badly. People assume it though, don't they, when you're tall? I would get the, all the stereotypical questions. I used to get it all the time. Hey, Denise, you're, you're six five. You must be a really good basketball player. I never applied that logic to the people I knew in my high school. I never came up to my woodshop teacher. Hey, Mr. O'Hara, you only got three fingers. You must be a really good bowler. Something I've noticed about hockey nowadays too is that um, it's so hoity-toity to have big numbers on your hockey sweater. The old days you didn't have that. Hey, like 77, 88, and you know what's gonna happen sooner or later. They're gonna end up running out of digits. You're gonna see all these new players joining the team and instead of a number in the back of their hockey sweater, they're gonna get one of those binary barcodes like they see at the grocery store. <laughs> Guy gets a penalty, the referee has to pick him up by the ankles and by the helmet, run him over a conveyor belt and a magic eye scanner. Two minutes for tripping, two minutes for hooking. Eggs, bacon, lettuce. But we really were flattered to have been uh, asked to host the celebration tonight. It, uh, it means that Don and I can share in the excitement of the Galaxy Awards, witness the thrill of victory, hear some moving acceptance speeches. And get our digs in at the CRTC for yanking us off News World. Exactly. <laughs> I, uh, I have to thank the person uh, with the big voice who introduced me. You know, they, uh, they did a nice job pronouncing my name, because it's not Dennis. It's, it's only one N in my first name. It's uh, see, Denis Gérald Joseph Grignon, complète avec l'accent aigu. Je suis Canadien Français de l'Ontario. Anybody over here? Are you French Canadian? Really? Whereabouts are you from? Montreal, La Ville de Montréal, Quebec. And are you totally French Canadian or are you bilingual? Well, I guess you're bilingual or you haven't understood it yet. I've been saying that. Man, am I a pistol, huh? <laughs> so I grew up in, uh, in eastern Ontario in, uh, in Cornwall, and uh, it's a little bit different. I grew up in. <laughs> Much different than that. I grew up in a bilingual household, which was great, because growing up in a bilingual household, my mother could speak to me in both French and English, both official languages. Yeah. But she'd do it at the same damn time. <laughs> so a conversation with my bilingual mother, if you were listening to it, would sound like a... Can you down the shark and right in the back of the front seat? You can't go the grocery seat, switch that in down the maison. Take the eggs out of the bag, mail it down the refrigerator. Be darn sure you don't crush the eggs or my and my bun right alongside that mom's stuff out of wet. There you go. Vous vous rappelez, c'était quoi? Le genre chrétien, il a pris dans ses mains pour se défendre. Une statue nuit. C'était avoir été témoin de tout ça. L'assassin rentre dans le genre de coucher de Jean chrétien. Il tombe face à face avec Jean chrétien. Jean, il est là, là dans, dans ses pyjamas qui vient juste acheter à Zellers. Hé, hey, mon tabarouette! T'es mieux de bien de remettre ce coupon que moi t'en calisse une bonne à la tête. Avec cette statue de bonhomme carnaval! And in my research, I remember asking Andrew, so you know, what can I expect? Oh, did he have nothing to worry about? We're very down to earth people, you know, we're not any different than, than anybody else, you know, you know, just treat us the way we're just like anybody else. And, you know, that, that kind of put me at ease. Until I ventured into your little exhibition room and I watched the video of a guy vacuuming a horse. <laughs> morning and I thought, you know, I just don't feel like doing my act. I think what I'm going to do is just wait until June, deliver it then. And I know I'd be covered because the Ministry of Education's no zero policy, you know, would cover it. So, I that still gets me. <laughs> I gotta tell you, my, my politics are pretty bleeding heart left wing, but when I heard that thing, that's... Oh, I just turned into a rough, get my rifle, who the heck come up with this crap, this is, I'm gonna add this guy's house, this is, I try to keep an open mind, but what granola sandal wearing hippie came up with that quota, crap, it's okay, you can hand it in never, you're still our little genius. discovered a whole new part of it. Isn't that the whole idea that you hand it in on time and if you don't, you fly? I mean, it's called thinning the herd. That's what we're supposed to do. 
been married, sir? 60 years? Oh, my word. You must have had coupons or something. That's the... Oh, my. Did you not find... What's, what's the biggest lesson you've learned since you've been married, you think? Tell the truth, really. And that's the best lie you can come up with, I guess. <laughs> you can fake that. I, I love being married. I've learned so much, apparently, in just following orders. I, do you still argue at all? You do? Good for you for being honest. You are telling the truth. That's good. And there is an art to argue, you know. You have to learn how to, uh, or you have to, learn how to apologize. More importantly, I've learned how not to apologize. I've learned now that I've been married for about 11 years, I've learned an apology should not sound like this. All right already. I'm sorry. <laughs> and if you really want to have some fun, just add a little something like, Satisfied, Your Highness? <laughs> and then sleep on the pull-out couch from Ikea, pretty much. That's, uh... I'll tell you one thing I have learned, though, since I've been married and have kids. I've learned that marriage is a lot like the game of chess. And for those of you who play chess, you can empathize with this. Chess is a lot like the marriage. You've got the, uh, the queen who is like the wife, and just constantly moving on the board, aren't they? Just got to pick up the kids, take them to hockey, go to the parent-teacher meeting, pick up the dry cleaning, do the groceries, and then you've got the, uh, the husband, who is like the king uh, and the queen. He can also move in any direction. One space at a time. <laughs> Fridge, TV, couch. <laughs> Fridge, TV, bathroom, couch. Honey, get the pawns out of the way, I can't see the game. And we've got a rant for you. Okay, granted, maybe this was more about a sloppy mistake than a deliberate bait and switch. But in my opinion, Home Depot still had to phony up the real advertised goods. Now, when I played my case, politely and calmly to two of their customer service associates, they insisted that this tiny little code here was what really identified the advertised product, not the actual photograph. Did you ever hear something so spectacularly stupid, you get dizzy? Do you remember, um, for breakfast, uh, puffed wheat? Do you remember? And the King Kong bags? 62 cents for a 19 foot bag of air? <laughs> hey Dad, how come you didn't use this crap to insulate the darn basement? <laughs> oh, your mother? Oh, forever coming up with the Martha Stewart recipes? Pour corn syrup on it, it'll taste just like sugar crisp. <laughs> It tastes like wet bread. You pour all that corn syrup on it, you've just changed it into diabetes. That's all you've done. And the bags, you remember they were huge, and it's worse. You grew up in a very poor, big family like I did. You know your mother's going to find a second use for that bag. Pretty embarrassing going to hockey practice with your equipment on those things. That was my mother's philosophy. On achète toujours le plus gros parce que c'est toujours un meilleur bargain. Buy bigger, better bargain. Even today, my 109 brothers and sisters have gone. My mother, alone in this little apartment, still buying an 18 foot industrial size family <coughs> economical shopper's drug mart bottle of shampoo. <laughs> I'd reach for it on the shelf and it would fall on me. God, get it 